Now, amigo, come on if I. Quiero algo que comer y donde dormir. Puedo pagarle. No habla español, inglés. Un americano. Aténdolo. Please come in, señor. Gracias. Quiere lavarse? He must go to town. Somehow he looked like a man who would have to go to town. Are you staying? No, oh, I've had a change of plans. When your husband comes back with the police, tell him I'm sorry I couldn't wait. <laughs> Gracias por todo.
Americano. Yes, Father. What are you doing here with the chickens? I was just resting against you, Shelley. This is for animals. The house is for men. Come. Oh, there's nothing. We will have a look at it. Come. I'm not. Leave him. Won't that be? Go get the money. Stop it! Stop it, you fools! He's got his hands up! Give him a chance! Stop. What is it? You were dreaming, my son. You shouted in your sleep. I'm sorry I disturbed you. Sleeping men shout in this fashion in prison, in the battle lines of armies, and when they are being hunted. What do you want me to do? Confess my sins? I want you to have peace. Then leave me alone. As you wish. I will rest your arm again. No doubt the pain was what disturbed you. No, 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 it's not much. It hardly hurts me. But you saw it yourself, it's only a little wound. And yet, Father, here's the whole trouble. Because of this wound or something, I, I can't move my arm. I can't lift it. You mean lift it as a man would who was ordered to surrender? The police. You track me for two days and nights. You'll be here in the morning. This is it. The end of the line. Even the police are not always so merciless. You understand? I saw it. I saw it happen to another man. He couldn't lift his arm either. He stood up in a lonely place at daybreak. Somebody shot him. Somebody shot him. Come and lie down, my son. You don't have to talk about these. But I do. I mean, I have to know the answer, Father, and there isn't much time. It began about a year ago. You might not believe it to look at me now, but in those days I was running an oil field. Hey, Lynn! Mm -hmm. Lynn Banner! I got a flash for you, Lynn. Drive me down to Southfield, will you, Herb? Got a broken bed down there. You better go to the office first. You know what day this is? Wednesday. And the ghost is supposed to walk this afternoon. We got payroll trouble? Not another stick. -up. I thought they were going to fly it in like last time. They couldn't get a plane. Earl Mahoney, you know the guy from Petroleum Finance Corporation? He was bringing it up himself by rail car, one of those putt-putt jobs. A bank vice prexy on a rail car? He must have been out of his mind. He had guts, Lynn. He knew how vital it was after all the trouble we had. He wanted to be personally responsible. Don't take it so hard, Lynn. We've got insurance, you know. Great, but meanwhile, what am I supposed to pay my men with lock washes and seashells? They like money, moolah, you know what I mean. Money, let me see. Twelve paydays a year, we get three stick-ups. Where's Mahoney now? He's in the office. We better step on it, huh? Who's this guy? Corporal Valdez. He was in charge of the guard. Only guard left? That's what they say. You better get Doc Fellows to take care of him. He's on his way over. All I want is a pair big enough to ride in. They don't have to fit. Hello, Vanner. Hi, Mr. Mahoney. Looks like we're in a little trouble. Uh, we'll get that money back. Every last cent of it. We'll get this fellow before Doc. You're not taking off again. <laughs> you bet I am. The police commandant has assigned a mounted squad to do the tracking. And I guess they're going to need me. Anything you want me for before I take off? Well, yes. Frankly, could you give me some idea of just what happened? I only got a sketch. I'd like to make out a report. Leon Tambico's calling. I'll call back in five minutes. It was a rough deal. We were right on that hairpin turn back of the gorge. You know the one? Yeah. Oh, thanks. And this fellow was track walking there. Never would have slowed down for him, but he, he had a company badge on and looked like an American. About your height, uh, stocky built. Thought maybe he'd been sent out to meet us. Then all of a sudden, the sky busted open and the shooting started. He got three of the guards with the first burst, but I fell off the car. It's probably what saved your life. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. 
Well, I'll put it all in writing when I get back. Good luck. <laughs> so long. Be happy. Miss Ware's waiting in there. Get a cigarette, Herb. Hi, baby. What are you doing here? I couldn't stay at the ranch. This is much too exciting. Hmm. So is having your pocket picked. Sometimes I'd settle for that. Hello. Yes, Mr. Hubble. Yes, that's it. The entire payroll. Yes, I imagine they'll cancel the insurance, but it can't be helped. Okay. Thank you. The doctor finished with that corporal? He's working on him now. Get a report from him. Ask him to see me when he gets through, will you? Sure. Like a drink? Not now. I don't want to keep you. Was I going somewhere? I thought you'd be going on the posse. <laughs> Not me. Lynn, you don't mean that. Sure, I mean it. Well, they'll think you're chicken. So I'm chicken. That stuff shirt, Earl Mahoney, will get all the credit for catching the thief. He won't catch him. But the posse. It's not a posse. It's a, an armed police squad with some gringo kibitzes. Besides, posses don't catch anything but cold in the head. And this one won't either. They think that guy's headed for the coast. Why wouldn't he? Because he's an American. What's that got to do with it? Yeah, an American to stay right on the railroad where you don't leave a trail. He could keep on all night that way, and along toward morning, he'd uh, cross over to the high road through some pass. El Tajon Pass, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, that'd be his best out. It's rough, but once he got across, he could hit the road. That's what he'd do, Lynn. If he knows the country well, and he did know it well. Oh, he must have planned this carefully. Oh, you bet he did. But if you actually caught this stick-up guy, you doped it out so brilliantly, if you brought him in all by yourself... I'll admit I'm crazy enough to wonder if I've doped it right. That's all I wanted to hear. Hmm? Marie, would you call my dad's foreman, Pedro, at the ranch? Oh, uh, hold your horses. Just one horse, darling, the one you're going to ride. Tell him to catch the quarter horse, the one Dad uses. Has he got a gun? What would I want a gun for? Never mind, we'll get one at the ranch. Come on, Sheriff. We don't want to keep that bandit waiting. Here we go. That horse must have been used to rocky country. He followed the trail up the pass all night as if he'd had eyes in his feet. For some reason, I was asking myself what I was doing there. Wondered if I hadn't been out of my mind to start on this chase in the first place, just to show off like a kid turning handsprings on his girl's front lawn or something. This wasn't a game of cops and robbers. We were playing for keeps. Boiled down to a duel between me and the unknown fellow waiting up in the rocks or, or struggling on ahead of me. Never had the slightest doubt that he was there and that I'd find him. But I didn't like it. It was all wrong somehow. Maybe I was afraid. And I don't think I was afraid for myself. It was more like, like being scared of what was going to happen. The moment which had to come soon now and would come, as if it had been determined long ago it couldn't be stopped by any act of mine. Now you see, Father, I'm trying to justify myself, explain what happened, though I... I never can explain it, not in any way that would make the answer come out right. Then suddenly I saw the man. Get your hands up! Both of them over your head! Get them up! Some posse man shooting a guy with his hands up. Told you to put them both up. I couldn't. My arm's busted. That's what I was trying to tell you. I didn't hear you. Where'd I hit you? That's uh, nothing. Maybe I'm lucky at that. Pick that coffee pot up, will you? Hey, didn't you used to work for Bolsa Grandy? Sure, I was a rigger. Sam Tevlin's my name. I thought so. And I know you, Mr. Vanner, and you don't act no different now than when you were down at the plant. All right, pull yourself together. I'm gonna stash your stuff and take you back. What for? You know what for. I never took that payroll, if that's what you mean. How'd you know about it? Well, I... All right, we'll talk about that later. 
Well, if I took it, where is it? Did I hide it out somewhere? Have I got it on? Why don't you search me? You got it on you, we'll find it. You've hidden it out, we'll find that too. All in due time. Come on. Come on. When we started down, I think I felt weaker than he did. I was shaky and sick because I... I knew in my heart I'd shot too soon. I hadn't given him a chance to explain about his arm. I felt pity for him. Oh, easy, man. <laughs> You've been sitting in a desk too much, Mr. Plessy, man. You're kind of soft in the belly. I didn't figure I'd have to pack you out of my back. Oh, buddies, aren't we? One pal don't mind helping another. Especially when he shot him with his hands up. That's a lie, and you know it. Do I? Come on. Maybe I ought to pack you on my back. Car waiting for you, huh? Yeah, could be. I don't suppose there's any use telling you again I didn't take that payroll. You'll have to tell that to the proper authorities. That's about what I figured you'd say. Look, Mr. Vanner, if those company guards get a hold of me now, I haven't got a chance. Give me a break, will you? Turn me loose right here. I'm not so beat up that I won't make out if you let me take the horse. Can't do it, Teflon. I was half tempted to give him the chance, but it was too late. I had to see this through the way I'd started. You certainly did. And say, did you hear about the reward? Reward? Yeah, the head office put it up last night, right after you left. Two thousand bucks. Congratulations, Bob. Nice point, Lynn. Boy, oh, boy, that helps. Hey, two thousand bucks. Never ride in a pal's boots unless he wears 12D. Well, my boy, I understand you're to be congratulated. You've done a fine job. Well, I'm not even sure he's the right man, but at least he's suspect number one. Uh, Lieutenant, my company has a vital interest in this matter. Uh, would you object if I asked the prisoner a few questions? No, go ahead, senor. But don't take too long. Oh, no. Where is he, Clark? In the back office, boss. Well, let's go and see if we can find something out. Thank you, Lieutenant. I suppose you'd call it a cross-examination. That's your man, all right, Lieutenant. He doesn't feel like talking, but I can positively identify him. Why the part will check it out, Mr. Mahoney. Good. How is he? In bad shape. I'm going to give him a hypo. Will you stay with him a minute?
cross-examination must have been a form of torture in his condition. There wasn't what killed him. What then? A bullet. Right there. Well, I thought that only nicked him. No, no. It punctured the pulmonary artery. He bled internally. of any reward when I went after this guy, and I don't have to be paid for bringing him in. Why do you keep saying paid? It's not paid. It's just the sort of prize and honor you're entitled to. Oh, Lynn. Think what $2,000 can mean to us. Oh, I'm not going to take it. I'd call it sentiment or superstition or anything you like. I'd call it insanity. You wouldn't borrow money from the company, and I could understand that. But now that they want to give you some, you refuse. Can't you see it from my angle? How do you expect me to feel? I don't mean to be rude, but I don't think this is your affair. I thought it was. Seems to me I remember starting you on this, right? Yes, you started me, but... Well, now it's something else. Something between me and... Your precious conscience. If you hadn't been cleared at the inquest, it might be different. I won't take it, Lynn. I've taken a lot and tried to understand, but this is just a little bit too much. You're breaking our engagement? No, you are, with this crazy attitude. I've waited and hoped and tried to see your point of view. I didn't know I was being taken. You never meant to marry me. All this talk about money was just an excuse. What you wanted was an alibi. Any reason was all right, as long as you could put me off. Well, you've got your way, and now I'm not changing my mind. This time it's finished. We're through. You're yelling. I will yell. Yes, we both found out at the same time, didn't we? We'd never get along. I just love you to pieces, Lynn. But I know I'll never understand you as long as I live. Remember, it's, it's right here on this table. I wish you'd keep it. That's very gallant of you. Just the right thing to say. But I'm leaving it. You might need the money to put in a blind man's cup or something. San Pico, 324. Is Mr. Banner calling Mr. Hubble? If he's not there, please try him at home. Thanks. Sorry to disturb you at this time of night, but yes, I believe it is urgent. Well, sir, I hate to put you in a spot, but I'm resigning my position with the company. That's right. I know it is sudden, but no, sir. Where to, senor? Just give me about 100 pesos worth of ticket. In what direction, senor? You name it, and I'll go there. First train out. Do I understand you wish a change of scenery? Any place will do? That's right. How would you like Los Santos? It's a nice little place. Los Santos? Yes. Today we ship a coffin there. For such shipments, a ticket must be bought. And this one has been paid for, too, according to the rules. But today, no one is using it. All right, I'll take it, thanks. You're welcome, senor. You saved me trouble, too. Would you be kind and give these to the baggage agent at Los Santos? I'll do that. Good luck, senor. I knew there was only one dead man who could be going from La Mancha that day, but I didn't care. I'd accept that much from Sam Temple, my transportation to a new life. After all, we'd been traveling companions before. I 
that was ahead of me. Nothing behind. I was a lucky guy, I told myself. Why not? I was still young enough, reasonably strong, and there's no life to be a lot of fun. All I had to do was hand some papers to a baggage agent, and then the last thread that held me to the past would be gone. I could go anywhere I felt like, do anything I wanted. Los Santos! Los Santos! Someone had paid to have Sam's body sent home, and the person who had paid would meet the train. Well, whoever it was, I didn't want to see them. I was finished with the whole business. I just had enough of it. I made up my mind to make tracks getting away from that station. Senor. El Recibo. You know, I was just reading about you. The guy on the coast sent me this. It wasn't a Veracruz paper. No. Keep it for your scrapbook. Didn't know you had it in you. Mm. I absolutely possess this, and here's luck. Luck? Oh, that is what we have plenty of it, then. Biggest blinking oil strike in years. Right here, only 50 miles from Los Santos. Maybe I ought to cut myself a slice of it. Oh, there'll be enough for everybody. Man, you should have seen that first gosher. Gosher? What is it, a gosher? Uh, with or without the accent. It's 50,000 barrels a day. All high gravity stuff. Really, why don't you come and have a look at it with me tomorrow, huh? Oh, come on, me. Get yourself a date. Bueno. So I took a job in a new field. After a couple of months, I quit. I kept thinking I had to get back to that town and find somebody. Crazy enough, I couldn't seem to think of anyone but this person. Yes, you guessed it, Father. It was the woman I'd seen for a few seconds on a railway station platform. Tevlin's widow. I found out that much about her. Then I found out where she lived. Finally, I hitched a ride out of town. That was the first time I saw the ranch. It was neat and comfortable enough, yet it had that sorry kind of a look a place gets when there's no man to take care of it. You know that it looked different once when there was hope. People started out to build something. And then, well, they let go or were defeated in their purpose. This was where a woman lived her life. I wondered what the power was that had drawn me there. Was it my share in her secret, or was it just herself, her beauty, or her personality, which was really unknown to me and only half guessed at? I hadn't thought up any special way to explain my visit. Figured I'd just knock on the door and see what happened. Who is it? Are you Mrs. Tablin? That's right. Won't you come in? Oh, 
Sit down. Thanks. Your name, please? Brown. Lindley Brown. We've seen each other before, haven't we, Mr. Brown? No, I don't think so. Oh. I hadn't expected anyone so soon. In answer to the ad. Oh. You understood the terms. I can't pay wages, but I'll share the profits after the stock is rounded up and sold. Oh, I see. Uh, I wasn't quite sure about the wages. Oh, I thought that was clear. It's right here. Foreman for Ranch Co-op. You must have understood it. Well, that'll be all right, I think. We run between three and four hundred heads. The range is good, and we have a nice calf crop. I have one Indian vaquera helping me, but I've no way to round out brand and sell. You should imagine it'd be a little hard to keep house and ride herd, too. Yes, even for a person capable of handling livestock, which I'm not. I've often thought of giving up and going back to the States. When I had to decide, I'd always try once more, hang on a little longer. My husband and I bought this place with savings, and he used to work in his spare time. Now my husband is dead. Well, I, I think you're quite right to keep it. A place of your own can mean a great deal. My husband used to work for the oil companies. Have you ever worked in the oil fields, Mr. Brown? Oh, yes, I have. But where I grew up, oil and cattle were a team nudging each other for the same hunk of ground. I can pass myself off for a cowboy when I have to. Get a load of those boots. He's no cowboy. Mike, this is Mr. Brown. This is my son, Michael. Hi, Michael. Yeah. Mike, you're right about these boots. They're no good. But I've had the other kind, no kid. And I can roll my own cigarettes when I have to. I'd want to be quite sure that you understood the work and that you were competent to do it. Things have run down here. It won't be easy. I'd like to try. Is he going to stay, Mom? We haven't decided yet. Well, if he is, I'm moving out. I'll tell you, Michael, I'm looking for a place to work, and your mother wants someone to help her the way you do. Oh, wouldn't it be all right with you if I just sort of hung around and helped your mom? It's okay with me, if that's what you want, Mom. All right. We'll try it and see how it goes. I suppose you have to get your things from town. All right, do that this evening. I'll show you the room you can use. So now I understood. She was stuck for somebody to work the ranch. She naturally would be with Sam gone. That ad in the local paper must have been a last resort for her. But for me, it was a chance sent from heaven. Slap a saddle on him and ride out with him. I'll tell you why I can't go. There's Indians around here. No kidding, sometimes they attack. Then I have to take care of Ma, you see? Sure, will you do that? So long, Mike. See you tonight. So long. Did Mr. Brown ask you to go with him? I couldn't go. There's an attack.
found some tracks and we followed them. And pretty soon Mike here heard this little bull calf bellowing. Just warning like he sounded gosh awful. He was dry gulps with his mammy in a little canyon where the spring had dried up. We got him out of there, though, didn't we? Next week I'm going to dam that creek so there'll be some water up that way when the bad months come. Glenn says when enough water gets in it, I can swim there. Fine, but right now it's getting pretty near somebody's bedtime. Aw, oh, gee, Ma. You want to be a vaquero, you've got to take time out to go to sleep. Can I fool around with Lynn a little while? Not tonight, honey. Mr. Brown has some work to do. You go along now. I'll be in later to read you that story. I was going to help him with that bridle he's making, but I guess it'll keep. It will have to keep. I have something else I want you to do. Will you come with me, please? Sure. I had the colt in here today, and he broke through the fence. I'd like you to fix it. Okay, I'll start first thing in the morning. I want it done now. Well, isn't it a little late to begin wrangling fences? When there's work to be done, you'll just have to do it. If you expect to stay here. She had a real genius for concocting that kind of assignment. Every night after work, in daytimes too, if I had ten minutes to spare, she'd come up with something new. And generally, she'd find some excuse to be around and watch me. If she could have stood over me with a whip, that would have pleased her better still. I almost quit a hundred times, but I always managed to hold out because I knew something was boiling inside her, eating her up, and I wanted to find out what it was. So I took everything she handed out and waited for the next move. First one would be about like that. That's pretty good, a little farther back. Press harder. You do it. Tired already? All right, what'll it be? The one you were playing. Oh, one about the doggies, you like that. As I was out walking one morning for pleasure, I spied a cow puncher a riding along. How his hat was thrown back and spurred was a jingle. As he approached me a singing this song. Yippee die ya yo, get along little donkey. It's your misfortune, but none of my own. Yippee die ya yo. Get along, little donkey. For you know that Wyoming will be your new home. Did you ever go to Wyoming? No, but I always had a hankering to. If you went, would you come back? Sure, you bet I would. Chances are I'm not going anyway. What's dead? I mean, what is it being dead? Dead? Well, that's when you're not here anymore. When you stop being what you are. When you start to be something else? I guess so, Mike. I don't know much about those things. Most people don't. My mom does. Does she? Yeah, she told me about it. My dad's not coming back anymore. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. He's in heaven. Heaven. What a place. I bet you nothing happens up there much. It's supposed to be all right. Those angels, they look like ladies. Are there men angels, too? They're both kinds, I guess. They have spears. Sure they do. I saw it in the picture. I had a spear once, but I lost it. Michael. I'm out here with Lynn, Mom. Lynn, dear, it's bedtime. I'm coming. 
all gone. Wish they hadn't lost that spear. I lost my bow and arrow, too. It was a swell one. My dad made it for me. When he comes back, he'll... Well, he's not coming back. I told you that. Can you make a bow and arrow? Well, I guess I could. I, I can sure try. Will you tomorrow? Well, yeah. Yeah, I will. Gee, thanks, Lynn. Okay. You better go on in now. Okay. You won't forget the bow and arrow, will you? No, I won't forget. You're a pal. Well, good night. Good night, son. There I was, moving into something I'd never bargained for. I was picking up a ready-made family for myself and loving it. All oh, except one thing. Ellen wouldn't change her manner to me. At least when we were alone. In front of Mike, she was nice as pie. Can I go out and shoot now, Mom? Sure. You coming, Lynn? In a minute. I'm fixing to help your mother with these dishes. Ah. Dishes? Holy smoke. I can make out without help, thank you. How long do we have to keep on this way? I don't know what you mean. The way we are now, like strangers mashed together against their will, not knowing what to do about it. What would you suggest we do about it? We could act a little human once in a while. Like at the table, you never say a word to me except pass this, pass that. When the meal's through, no time for anything. I go to work. Mike goes to play, and you can sit around and talk a little bit. Now, people do that. Just pour an extra cup of coffee. Oh, if you don't like that, we could go uptown. Sure, in the evenings. We can walk around the plaza and listen to the band, look in the shop windows, maybe even take in one of those old-time movies. Now, Mike would like that. We have no money to waste on shows. But we have to do something, don't you see, even if we... We fight and yell and throw things. What should we fight about? About anything. And at least we prove that we're alive. This way it's nothing. The days go by, I don't know where they go or what's wrong. It's like a sickness or like being goofy or something. We just stand still. You feel it too. You know what I mean. Well, even hate would be... Hate? What do you know about hate? Well, not much, thank God. Hate can be sweeter than anything. <laughs> Purchase of just a scratch. a big Indian war today. It's Sunday. You said we could swim at the dam Sundays. Oh, you can't go alone, dear, and I can't go with you. Oh, gee, Pablito can swim. He's going to teach me. Lynn has the irrigation ditch all made, and it's real deep. <laughs> all right, go on. Gee, thanks. I don't blame him. Oh, it's there. Wow. It's always that way this season. Surely going swimming with the kids, I don't know what to do about it myself. I use the family swimming pool here, like Mike did yesterday. You're most welcome to it, I'm sure. You mean I have your gracious permission to dump myself? You know I don't care what you do. Oh, you're too kind. You can't miss a chance like this.
I was working one time on a tramp steamer down in the Caribbean. We were quarantined for a couple of weeks in a company port. There was a case of typhus on board. Well, maybe we were lucky or it wasn't typhus or something. Anyway, when we put out to sea again, the captain stopped the ship and let us all go overside for a swim. And it was a great feeling. And you know something? Today was just as good. 